would love for you to tell us who you are and share your story with us. I'm Alexa Chronister. I am the founder of Fight Like a Warrior and I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and a form of dysautonomia called POTS, Postural Orthostatic Tachycardia Syndrome. And I went through a period of misdiagnosis and undiagnosis during a really transformative time in my life. I was a senior in high school, going to be a freshman in college, and I was relatively lucky in the short time period that was spent um, kind of searching for answers, but I began to really find the community of people who are dealing with chronic illness on a daily basis. and. I realized that all of these people have spent years, if not decades, searching for answers. And I also realized my own um, privilege in being able to have access to different resources and research. I had family support and I had parents who really taught me about self-advocacy. And I really became passionate about patient empowerment and um, really teaching patients to believe in themselves, have that confidence in themselves to speak their truth. And I saw a bunch of the different flaws that exist in the system firsthand, and I continue to hear about them through the patients that we work with. Um, and through this, I really founded Fight Like a Warrior, um, the organization as it is today, as a nonprofit that unites empowers and advocates for anyone who is battling a chronic health condition all around the world. Can you talk about your community, Fight Like a Warrior, and exactly um, who's in that community and how important is that advocacy work that you're doing? Yeah, so Fight Like a Warrior is a really open community. It's open to anybody around the entire world of any age, of any background, anyone who feels that they identify with what our community stands for. Um, so it's a place for patients, those who are battling any sort of chronic health challenge, but it's also a place for caregivers and medical professionals to join in on the conversation and have important discussions about health and the patient voice and the value of the patient voice. So what we do through our variety of awareness and advocacy campaigns is really important to our community because oftentimes they do feel isolated and unheard. Um, we have patients from across the world, many of whom may not know someone in their personal life that is dealing with a similar condition or experience, but they're able to find those individuals in our community. And that connection is also really powerful in really validating um, patients in their own story and their own truth and um, bringing people together um, because people are often so spread apart and they do feel isolated really helps to amplify our advocacy efforts. In your experience as a patient, in what ways um, did the healthcare system fail you um, in your patient experience? In my personal patient experience, I think that, I mean, I know that my gender played a role um, in my experience more negatively than <laughs> I would have um, hoped, but I also know that I'm also privileged in a bunch of different ways that um, others aren't. And there's a bunch of different biases that exist in the system. For me, it happened to do with my gender and my period of misdiagnosis and undiagnosis was really strongly based on that. And that was directly told to me from my physician, which was really, really challenging. Um, and it took a lot more effort and confidence to really speak up for myself um, and feel confident in my, my truth. Um, and I think a lot of patients struggle with that because there's a lot of um, a lot of different ways that your voice can be uh, diminished or pushed aside as a patient. Um, and I think especially there's a bunch of um, the majority of people in our community are women or girls, and I think that they often have their voice kind of brushed aside um, when they're trying to seek answers. 
How would you suggest that the healthcare system itself um, help facilitate patient voices in every decision making um, across the board? Yeah, I think that one of the major things that empowers patients is access to resources and research that is able to be understood um, by patients. A lot of times the internet can be a really great tool to find um, research about your condition, but a lot of times it's, it's a scientific article or it's an academic article or it's a medical journal article and it's not necessarily geared towards patients. So having more of those resources that are geared towards patients, that patients are really able to understand their condition, their treatment plan allows patients to be more engaged and informed in um, their care. Talk about your generation and how um, your generation is being neglected or how they can be um, included in the conversation. There definitely needs to be more young voices in this discussion. I think that social media has been a really powerful tool to get our generation engaged in in the conversation and have a voice in the conversation and really build platforms and unite the patients and the like-minded people from this generation um, and really kind of uh, band together to create different powerful advocacy efforts because of the strength that exists in numbers and being able to connect people from um, a wide variety of places. I think there needs to be more young voices and patient voices involved in um, greater healthcare discussions, but I think that social media has been a really awesome tool to kind of get the ball rolling in that area and show the value that exists in young in young voices. One of the things that I'm interested in knowing is um, who would you say need to be leading the charge in creating a difference, a better patient experience for patients that are chronically ill um, post COVID nineteen and even during uh, this time that we're in. Improving care for the chronically ill, I think, comes from a variety of different sources, including patients. Um, but I think especially for the chronically ill who have more complex conditions and there's a lot of different facets, facets to their condition, um, and they're often seeing a bunch of different specialists, that it's really important from the system side of things to have communication. Um, be really strong between different specialists um, and really treat these chronically ill patients who are complex as the unique individuals and cases that they are. Um, because of the nature, I think, of chronic illness, each person kind of can present really differently and just taking the time to listen to patients and value the patient voice is um, really important in improving improving quality of care, but from the patient side of things, I definitely think that, you know, being your own best advocate and being an informed patient is really important. Um, following um, what your physician is telling you, but also not being afraid to question and seek different resources and different opinions is really important. And with that, my last question is, um, what would be your call to action? Is treating people as individuals and listening to patient voices and giving patients the tools that they need to be informed and engaged in their care. And I think that that comes from both having a patient who wants to do that and a physician who wants to do that. And that relationship is really strong uh, in establishing access to care. Um, but I also think that sometimes that that can't happen if there are, continue to be different biases um, based on somebody's income or education level or race or gender or anything. As we work towards elimin recognizing those biases, calling out those biases and working towards eliminating those biases, I think that um, the quality of care for patients will be higher and patient outcomes will be very much improved. Thank you for everything that you've done and thank you for all the things that you're about to do, which is incredible.